This is the first lecture for chapter 21 on viruses. Um, I wanted to start out by going to our um, uh, Moodle page. And on our Moodle page, the first um, section that you're always going to see is the introduction. So um, under that are all the sections for the different chapters that we're going to study out of our OpenStax textbook. So I'm going to click on chapter 21, um, which is viruses, and show you how to get to the slides. Um, before you see the slides, you, you'll notice that I've posted some videos um, and different resources to help you learn about viruses. Um, you may as well get used to the Wendy Riggs YouTube lectures because I'm a big fan of hers. She does a really good job of lecturing on biology and anatomy and physiology, and I use her. Her lectures are very short. They're little short, like clips. and um, I use her a lot, so I think you'll like her too. But if you keep scrolling down, you'll see the Chapter 21 slides. And I wanted to show you those slides and what some of my students in the past have told me works really well for them because we're not in class together and you're not forced, I mean, or you don't feel like you actually have to take notes. And sometimes it's hard. In a lecture like this, where I'm just talking through the slides and maybe ma making a few notes um, or underlining and highlighting a few things, um, it's not real interactive like it is in the classroom setting, and it can get kind of boring. So um, what some students have told me really works for them is to print the slides, but to print them and have them in front of them as they watch them. because. Uh, what you can do is you can print them like this. Go to print and print um, three slides per page, and then the right side of the page has a place where you can take notes. And this is not, you don't have to do this, um, but this is just something that there's usually no more than 50 slides per um, chapter that we do. And it's just something that may, you may find useful taking notes as uh, you listen to the lecture. Um, and don't forget to, as you're going through the lecture, with this being a recorded lecture, that you can stop and scroll back and, and watch a part again if you didn't understand it. So now I'm going to get started with um, Chapter 21 on viruses. Okay. And um, this is sort of an introduction to the chapter. It tells you a little bit about uh, viruses. One thing about viruses is that they are acellular, which means the same thing as non-cellular. They are not cells. And since they're not cells, they're not cellular, they're not really considered to be living things. You may remember that from Bio 111. Um, they have no metabolism. Metabolism, remember, is the chemical reactions that go on inside of cells. They can't grow. And they can't reproduce on their own. They have to have a host cell to reproduce. But they have many things in common with living cells, such as they have genetic uh, material, either DNA or RNA. And they do affect living things for sure. So we have, this is why we have an entire chapter on viruses before we start our microorganisms. Um, they, they do depend on the host cell to copy themselves. It's uncertain. Their evolutionary history or origin is uncertain, although we will discuss some hypotheses of their um, how they evolve. Um, but basically, they um, contain nucleic acid, whether it's DNA or RNA, and it seems that they've collected pieces of nucleic acid from various sources, uh, many times from uh, the host cell that they infect. They can infect nearly all life forms. So there are viruses that infect bacteria. There are viruses that infect algae and protozoans. There are viruses that infect fungi and plants and animals. This shows you an image taken from tra uh, transmission electron microscope. So it's called a transmission electron micrograph. Um, 
and this is the on the left you see an image of the tobacco mosaic virus which causes um, tobacco mosaic disease and um, this was the first virus that was ever discovered and from the picture on the right you can tell it doesn't just infect tobacco so um, any of you from this area have probably seen tobacco and you realize those are not tobacco leaves. Those are actually the leaves of the or an orchid plant um, that produces the orchid flowers. And you can see what the virus does to those leaves. So this, um, this is infected um, orchid leaves with um, tobacco mosaic virus or TMV. First virus discovered. This is another um, photograph, micrograph of a virus. This particular virus um, is called a bacteriophage. It's a virus that infects the E. coli bacterium. And you can only see part of the bacterium in the picture, but this is the virus. And you, you can see really how small the virus is in comparison with the, um, with the bacterium. Um, it also is, uh, has a complex shape. Um, to me, it looks a little bit like a spaceship that has docked on a planet, but this is really a virus that has attached to its host, which is an E. coli bacterium, and um, it's about to inject its genetic material into the E. coli and cause it to make new viruses and that can escape and infect new host cells. Almost all viruses are too small to be seen with light microscopes, which is why the, a lot of these images that we're looking at are transmission electron micrographs. Um, a, a virion is a single virus particle. And once electron microscopes were invented, we, we began to be able to actually see viruses. Um, and this is, this is the, the same image that we just saw, but it's kind of showing you so you can, um, you've seen bacteria under the microscope and, and you're gonna see, see bacteria under the microscope even more um, in the next chapter, chapter 22. But under a light microscope, bacteria, um, you have to use the highest power, which is the oil immersion lens that magnifies 1000 times. Um, and you can still not see a whole lot of detail. So these cells here are prokaryotic cells. Um, these cells that you see that are just kind of either circular or oval in shape. Um, and then what you're seeing on the left in picture A is just part of a prokaryotic cell or bacterium. And you can see how small the virus is in comparison to that. So is is pretty much near impossible to see a virus under a light microscope. They're very, very small. Virus evolution, which we are not really sure about, um, there are three hypotheses. There's the regressive, let me see if it's in the notes. No, okay. There's the regressive hypothesis, the progressive hypothesis, and the self-replicating hypothesis. Um, but they're hypotheses. So, um, we don't know if they, uh, it says devolved from free living cells, which is the regressive hypothesis. So maybe um, pieces of free living cells, um, proteins and nucleic acids um, and enzymes, or did the nucleic acid escape from cells? which is the progressive hypothesis, or the self-replicating hypothesis. Did they begin as molecules uh, such as transposons, um, which are just pieces of, of uh, DNA that can jump around in a chromosome? Um, so, so it's regressive, progressive, and then self-replicating hypothesis. But the point is no one's really sure. What we do know is that viruses contain at least two components, at least 
a nucleic acid, whether it's DNA or RNA. And that DNA or RNA, this is something that's different from what we learned in Bio 111. In Bio 111, we made a table and we compared DNA and RNA. And we said one of the differences is that RNA is single-stranded and DNA is double-stranded. With viruses, DNA and RNA can be single or double-stranded. They can both be either single or double-stranded. And outside of the nucleic acid core is something called a capsid, and that capsid is composed of proteins. Those proteins, by the way, have a name. Those proteins are called capsomeres. So I'll write that here for you. So the proteins that form the capsid are called capsomeres. Some virions also have outside the capsid, they have an envelope. And the envelope is very similar to a cell or a plasma membrane because it um, is thought to have evolved from the plasma membrane, um, kind of through a process like exocytosis. And so therefore the envelope contains um, components like phospholipids and glycoproteins similar the, of, um, as to what you find in plasma membrane. There are four various main primary shapes of viruses. Some viruses are what we call filamentous and um, so they look like little filaments. But those filaments typically are helical, kind of kind of like, you know, DNA is a double helix. So they're helical or spiral in shape. Um, you can't tell that from the image there, but those um, rod-shaped virus structures are actually, the components are actually, you know, a spiral shape. Um, then we have some that are icosahedral. And we have some that are enveloped. They have an envelope surrounding the capsid that um, is composed from uh, you know, phospholipids and glycoproteins from the host cell plasma membrane. And then we have a complex shape, which we saw in the bacteriophage earlier, called a head and tail formation. Inside the head, you have the DNA, in this case is double-stranded DNA, and then you have the tail component that um, looks like it has little legs that sort of help in the attachment of the bacteriophage to the host or the bacterium. This bacteriophage is called bacteriophage T4, and it infects the bacterium E. coli or Escherichia coli. A bacteriophage is a virus that infects bacteria only, and this one, the, uh, the bacteriophage tends to have a head and tail formation. It has a DNA genome, and we have studied this type of virus extensively for different reasons. For one thing, um, understanding how a virus can infect and kill E. coli can maybe help us to um, come up with a treatment for E. coli, an effective treatment for E. coli. But it's also been um, able to help us understand all life cycles, for, for even for animal and plant viruses. This is the structure of a virus called an adenovirus. Um, an adenovirus infects the human respiratory tract. It only has the DNA core and then an outer capsid with glycoproteins attached. The capsid is composed of proteins called capsomeres. Um, and it is non-enveloped. It does not have an envelope outside the capsid. So we've got the adenovirus. We've also got um, poliovirus, human papillomavirus, or um, HPV, which is the one that causes genital warts and can lead to uh, cervical cancer, and hepatitis A. This virus is a retrovirus. It's actually um, an illustration of the H of HIV, which is human immunodeficiency virus. Um, and it causes, which of course, as you know, causes AIDS, acquired immunity.